Hello everybody and welcome back to Challington Farm. So the Fen is continuing to sow the spelt. It's almost finished, it has just less than 20 minutes left to go. And once it is done, it's going to be moving on to a bit of ploughing in the field which we're currently working in. So we'll leave it to it. The field we're currently in is this one here. As you can see, I've just started doing a bit of uh, rowing and it has now dried out enough for us to be able to do some, uh, some bagling. It's great, it's converted to hay. I was thinking before that I could just get away with tedding it and then it automatically converts to hay, but yes, that was the base game. With seasons, we, well, seasons and the um, maze plus, we want to be doing this properly. We need to ted it twice and then wait for the sun to bake it. I don't know if you can get away with just tedding it once, but I did it twice and that's how I got to this stage. So yeah, we, we just need to go around the field, it's definitely easier from third person view, go around the field, getting this all rowed up, and then we can get the baler out, we can get it all bailed up, and my plan is to keep around a third of it. I don't think we need to keep more than a third, uh, because we, well, we don't even have any animals yet, and there's only so much they're actually going to require. The hay is for the winter, over the, uh, over the summertime and the autumn, they can eat grass, there's going to be plenty of grass about. So, yeah, if we put a third into the shed and then sell the rest, we can actually currently get £300 for every 1,000 litres, which doesn't sound amazing. But hay isn't worth that much anyway. And I know that maybe I should have just left half of the field for silage, but we actually have loads of silage anyway. You can never have too much, but I do like to do a bit of a variety. I don't like to do the same thing or too much of the same thing. Which is why I actually didn't win the competitive multiplayer. Because uh, I just like to do variety. I don't I don't care if I don't win. Um, I don't play this game to make as much money as possible. I play it to do all the different things. And even then, I struggle. I do struggle to focus on um, different things in every episode. It's tough. But yeah, talking about silage. It is fermenting, it's currently two-thirds fermented, so that means that it will be in this in-game day, but not necessarily in this episode. I hope it will be, but, well, it, playing it real time it won't be. I'll put the time to times five. I think that is the best way of playing. And then we'll go from there, really. We'll see if it's ready. If it is, then we're going to have to sort out a trailer. We have the JCB with the bucket, so we can load it up, no problem at all. But first things first, let's just continue rowing this, and then we'll get the baler into the field. Oh, and of course, yeah, I've completely forgot about the <laughs> the fent there. Before we can do the plowing, of course it has to do the baling, so that is its next job, and we'll be driving the tractor to do that. That's almost finished. Some nice neat rows. Uh, yeah, I don't think I missed too much. This might be the old spec which has been missed, but it's nothing. And even if I do leave it, it would rot away. But yeah, I'm not saying I'm not going to pick it up. I'm going to try and pick everything up. We need as much as possible. And this field, I think, is going to be carrots. If it's not carrots, it's going to be onions. I'll take a look at the prices and see which one tends to be higher, but it doesn't really mean that it's worth more because it comes down to the yield as well, how much you actually get. I want to do both, now, I will be doing both eventually. Carrots and onions, but I'm thinking probably carrots for this field. I think that'd be quite interesting. Okay, so we currently have 376 for carrots, and that, that price is increasing, 
and 372 for onions and that price is steady so it looks like they're very similar carrots are obviously slightly higher at this stage but that's not saying that onions can't overtake so i would say they are identical we'll just do both on separate occasions uh so if i go and put this windrower back in the shed i know it's not mine can't afford it yet but as soon as we've sold the silage we will be able to afford it i look forward to it because it, it's sort of tricky this stage if you've only got 2339 pounds you can barely even afford to rent let alone buy and that's what can really pressurize you and, and stress you out if, if you've got those kind of financial issues so yes i'm so pleased that we do have the silage to sell and the hay as well uh, right so i wonder if the fence has finished its job i doubt it but it can't be too far off we might be able to finish it off ourselves yeah because at the moment it's probably just spending a lot of time turning around yeah it is doing so goodbye worker you've done a good job but we we don't really need you anymore I would say it's about 10 minutes worth here maximum 5 to 10 minutes so we, we shall finish putting the spelt in the field and this is a big field this is going to take a while to harvest. Oh, we still have the course play markings there. Let's just turn this off. There we go. And we'll get it done. See if we can spot any trains while we're doing it. Just checking up on the alfalfa crop. It's looking good. It's growing nicely. Uh, probably by midsummer this will be ready to cut, and we will most likely do yeah, most likely wrap it to make silage. That'd be a good way of making money. And I was actually going to check and make sure we can actually put onions and carrots in the ground at this time of year because I know we should be putting them in around now, but I might be a little bit too late. Like only just too late. Uh, oh no, good. Yeah, we can go until the end of spring. Very nice. Okay, so we'll drop off the drill. We will attach the baler. We'll get that field baled. We'll get it all clear with the JCB and with the lorry. Get the lorry and flatbed trailer into the field. And once that's all processed, once we've got it into the shed and sold and stuff, I'll be able to get the plough going. Well, actually, I might be able to get the plough going before we finish moving them all. If it's going to do the headland first. I think I probably will get the worker to do the ploughing again because we can focus on other jobs such as preparing for the carrots to be put in. But yep, that's that field completed. Which is great. We can just leave it to it. I've put so much effort and work into into that field that um, yeah, it, it's probably not going to need anything for a little while although fertiliser will be the first thing. So none of them have been fertilize that means we have a lot of fertilizer applications to do that's really bad uh, right so that needs to be put onto the top of the priority list we're well, pretty much to the top after this um, we've got a spreader so we can spread it but I'm thinking it's going to take a long time because it is basically the same amount of time as the lime spreading and that took forever so I will just rent a self-propelled sprayer and we'll apply liquid fertilizer but we do need the money first anyway we have to sell the silage or the bales even if I wanted to apply fertilizer now I wouldn't be able to okay so we actually don't need the front weight on but I'll keep it on for now yeah there's no point taking it off It was amazing. In the previous episode, I actually did bale a small section of the field with the T4. It could run this baler. I don't think it appreciated it too much, but 
the fact that it could even oh, I keep doing that the fact that you could even turn it over was just amazing I always turn left into there so I guess the big question is how many bales are we going to produce the first bale is going to be grass because we already have grass in the baler I could empty it we would lose three and a half thousand liters so we're just going to have to accept uh, that the first one is going to be grass we can still give it to the the, uh, the sheep when we get them so how much has this yielded it's filling up fairly quickly yeah because it is a Heston bale so it's a higher capacity than the standard bale yeah I'm, I'm happy with that, it's a good fill rate so I'm going to guess at 20 bales, 15 to 20 bales I can't say exactly just that sort of range I'll, I'll go dead in the middle we'll say 17 So yeah, join in if you want to. Guess how many bells we're going to produce. It's never going to be a crazy figure. I've never even fertilised this field, so it can't be that good. Uh, right, okay, so let's get it done, and I will see you in just a minute. Right, okay, so we're at the end of the baling. It's gone well. Quite a few bells in total. I have got the JCB. I know that the trailer is an auto stacker, but we're not going to use it because it isn't a true auto stacker. It's a teleporter. And yes, a teleporter has not been invented yet, so we can't use it in a semi-realistic series. So I'm just going to have to load it with a, with a, with a front loader or a telehandler. So if we just lift that up, we do still have some hay in the baler, but that's just going to have to stay there very similar amount to what we started with actually so they've sort of cancelled each other out and we have produced 14 bales so yeah I was off by uh, 3 in total but maybe somebody guessed it did, did you say 14? if you said 14 then well done we shall get them all put onto the trailer but once I have got enough cleared from the headland we can start the plough actually we might be able to start the plough straight away anyway if none are actually on the first round of the headland. Uh, now, where shall we put the baler? I could put it back where I came from, but I do need to have a good place to stack these bales, or at least a third of them. Maybe if I put the bales where the tether is, yeah, so we'll keep this here. That dump trailer there is going to be really good. The tip trailer is going to be great for moving the silage. I will actually take a look and see what percent fermented it is. Yeah, if I put the tether next to the loading wagon, that will free up all of this bay here. Yeah, this tractor actually did struggle quite a bit going up the hill. But, yeah, it actually could do with the service. There we go. Right, so, yeah, I think the plough is back around the corner. Which means we're not coming back here. 71%, so I think it was 64% earlier, uh, which means, yeah, it's probably not going to be today. I think it'll be in the next in-game day. 
But it, it's progressing. It, it's getting better. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take. I would guess it's going to be something like an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. Always hard to tell. But as soon as I start it, it will it will tell us, but then that excludes turning around time. Yeah, guessing we've uh, had a leasing fee. <laughs> we have £92 left. That won't be an issue soon. So we do have a few boats. There's one in the headland over there, but I can get that moved straight away. So let's set the course. This is going to be interesting. Uh, course, no, not copy generation. Course generation. Field number 36. Headland three times. Generate course. I uh, don't think there's anything else to do. Should be fine. Okay. Looks good. Drive course. And it should tell us how much, or how long it's going to take. And that seems good. One hour in total. It was exactly one hour. It's impressive. I do currently have the auto auto load feature switched on the trailer, so I need to turn it off. Because I, I really want to do this with the JCB. But I, yeah, I think that worker is actually following the original field boundary. You can see there is a difference. I have mowed outside of the field boundary. But it's better that way, because then we actually have um, a, a bit of turning space when we come to harvest. Uh, right, so yeah, that, that's clear to go. So I don't want to get in range of that. I'm probably going to have to unload that to the bed. Uh, let's just see here. Unload bales, yep. And then Y again. And then we need to be in transporting position. I hope that's it, otherwise we're going to have uh, two more bells auto-loaded. Okay, so one of these is actually a grass bell. We may be able to sell it. don't know if it's possible to sell grass, but you can definitely sell hay at the BGA. And these are the final two. So I might as well take these straight back to the shed. Put them away immediately. And then we'll bring the entire trailer back and we'll take a few off. Because, yeah, not forgetting, it's 6,000 litres per bale. Sheep don't require much hay and grass anyway. Um, so, yeah, that, that's fine. And they'll be fed with grass up until the winter. Uh, this is, of course, when we have the sheep. We don't even have them yet. But the sheep will be the first animals that I buy because they're just so fast and easy. And they're relatively cheap to buy in the first place. Ah. I thought my grab was in. Okay, yeah, so I am thinking... I did say a third originally don't know how many, maybe we should just keep about five yeah five, roughly a third anyway, uh, just ever so slightly over a third and then the rest can be taken to the BGA and yeah of course we won't get paid until midnight that's the, uh, the big issue with selling it at BGA but it's the only place that was showing a price I think if I was to put them into the shed here, we would get paid. But how much, I don't know. 
the BGA tends to be the best. And now for the rest of them. How's that plough doing? It looks like it's starting to go up and down. That'll be the slow part, just starting off over there. This nice long straight here will be easy. But yeah, I think it is far better as an arable field. I don't know what everybody else thinks, but I think... Because we already have this big grass field here. That's plenty. That's all we need. I think long term I could make much more doing arable crops. Not only that, but it would be much more interesting. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Because, yeah, maybe, maybe you would make more just constantly doing silage. But I don't want to constantly do silage. Plus, we're going to have the alfalfa, and that's most likely going to be silage. So that's going to be worth a bit. I will attempt to sell the grass bale. Uh, right, so... I guess five in total would be an odd number. Maybe if I just take these two stacks, these two back stacks, because there's nothing on the other side. Put them into that. So yeah, in total we'll keep six. My third is getting larger and larger. It's also because I know that the money is coming from the silage. I never did hay to make money. Well, not directly anyway. Only through sheep. Go on, sticky bale. And yeah, the final one. Hopefully that uh, rear strap isn't holding on to uh, these two bells here. Sometimes they can do. Uh, yes, it is doing. Okay. And there we go. We have our hay in storage. And we have some straw. Not that we need it yet, that would be for the cows, but uh, cows are coming, just not yet. They're further down the line, probably uh, maybe in the winter, maybe next spring. Right, so the BGA is down here. Uh, the best way of getting to that is going to be by going on the top road, drop down. And actually, we'll be passing field number three. So we can check up on the crop that we put into there. Hopefully we don't need any kind of loader to unload these. Another beautiful day on Chellington Farm. It really does look good. It'll look even better when the crops start growing. Yeah, field three turning is just there on the right hand side. We'll look over the hedge. Okay, so yeah, no progress yet. It's early days. I would hope that in the next couple of episodes it will have germinated. And it should start to look very good. Uh, so there really is no rush to get the fertilizer on, but we can do. This is a time when we can do it, if we had the money. As soon as it's germinated, definitely. Yeah, that is a time where it, it, it really needs it. So, if yes, if I'm not mistaken, the BGA is in the same place as in FS15. We did that massive silage session. It was uh, the FS15 Christmas special, 2015. Although, it's a very different layout. I remember the pits were sort of over here and selling places over there where the trees are. Good to make it different. Okay, yeah, so it looks like either we're too high or you do have to put them into the processor. So I'll just get my uh, big muscles out. Right, here we go. Yeah, I think you actually have to get them into the processor. The interesting thing here is going to be the grass bale. I would imagine it would take it, but as for how much money we get, that's a different thing. Probably not much at all. Yep, took it. Uh, in fact, it must tell us, surely. Oh, it's £300 as well. Nice. Good. Okay, 
450 pounds for every 1,000 litres of silage. Not bad. Uh, actually, we can get the trailer attached to this uh, lorry in preparation for loading up with silage, which will definitely be in the next episode. Since we are not going to be able to sell the silage today, I think we're going to have to take that £10,000 loan, which will repay immediately. I didn't want to do it, but we're going to have to, because the planter is... It's not super expensive, but we just we have £92, so... Uh, yeah, I think that explains everything. So if we get a planter, we'll get more seed, we'll put the carrots in the ground, and then once the silage is sold, we can then give the money back to the bank and we can forget about the loan again, which will be good. Okay, so we have the trailer just here. Position that about here. Make it nice and easy to load. And then, yep, yeah, let's just start the dreaded loan. Uh, it's great that we have it, but I suppose we could do contracts, but they take a lot of time. Wow. £81,000? How long is that supposed to take? Uh, planting sugarcane in field number 73. How big is it? Oh, crikey, that must be a big field. It sounds good, but I think that would be very painful. So, uh, 73 is that? Wow. That must be a, a huge, huge job. Really slow planter or something. Uh, anyway. Yes, as we were doing, we need to get that loan. 5,000 might do, but I'm going to take 10. Just to play it safe. So, planters. I need to get the best value for money here. That's what we had in competitive multiplayer. Okay, so 69. 3519. I think... This setup, six meters, six meters, yeah, this setup, the Lemkin, I would imagine is the best one to go for. So we will lease it. Uh, as you can see, it does carrots and onions, so we can actually keep it for the onions as well, providing we have somewhere to put the onions at the time. Uh, and yes, we'll have to go and fetch them. We'll have to buy seed as well. The plow is getting on nicely. We can't do it until the plow is finished anyway obviously but still 50 minutes and more than 10 minutes has passed so it just goes to show that timing is uh, not taking into account turning dare I attempt to bring it back with the T4 yeah I do <laughs> the T4 is an absolute beast it's so powerful it seems so heavy as well it's great oh, I keep trying to go through here I can go through here but it's not the fastest way ever Ooh, sneaky shortcut. Now it's a fast way. Okay, see you over at the store. I'm matching colours again. Always, well, I actually accidentally colour match. It would be surprising if this could actually run this. I, I, I don't know if it can, but uh, we could give it a go. <laughs> I don't think so. Right, okay, so let's just go on to here. Let's get some seed. One might do it. Yeah. And then the front is for the uh, the fertilizer. Again, I don't know how much we need. It's twice. Uh, yeah, that's a better price. Good job I noticed. Now the the fertilizer will probably act as a counterbalance. Exactly 2,000. That's good. Fold that up and we shall head off to the field. Set the carrots so I don't start planting the wrong crop. Oh yeah, I want to do miscanthus as well, that'd be very interesting. And who put that gate there? I can't believe how powerful it is. The true test is going to be up that hill. If it can get up the hill, then this thing is just unstoppable. 
It's only supposed to be 115 horsepower. Yeah, it looks to be getting on well. We can start putting some carrots in, and we will do. Um, but I don't want to get too close to the plough, because it might try and plough what I've done. Uh, this is, of course, assuming that it's actually going to work. If it doesn't have the power, then there's no point. Okay, so in go the carrots. Possibly. Possibly in go the carrots. Yeah, I've put no lime down yet either. Um, it, yes, it's doing it. But, yeah, it's slipping. So th this is kind of crazy. But it's all we have. We can't put the plough on this tractor. The only other thing we can do is wait, and that would be the sensible thing to do. So, to save making this series look really unrealistic, we will have to wait until next time. Um, but, yes, I'll just keep this going until the plough has completed the field. I don't think it's going to be much longer. 42 minutes. Okay, so we'll get that done. Uh, at the beginning of the next episode, we'll be ready to put the fence onto the planters. We'll get this field planted with carrots. And then hopefully from there we'll be able to do the silage selling. Then the big money can come in and we'll be fine. We can get more tractors and everything and the series can really take off. But as I'm sure you can appreciate, these are early days. So you can't just expect to be uh, making millions immediately. Anyway, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.